Today we're talking about bacterial infections in koi and pondfish. Bacterial infections are as inevitable as taxes and death. Most hobbyists will see this sooner or later. There are probably a hundred possible causes for bacterial infections. One of the most common is they will almost always occur a week after the water fouls or develops white cloudiness. That's a bacterial bloom. Bacterial infections will also occur if the fish have parasites chewing on them, such as in the springtime, or as the water warms up. Their immune systems are weak at that point. Bacterial infections will also occur after the stress of shipping, or if the pond they are put into is filthy or too small. If fish get a bacterial infection, it usually manifests itself as bloody streaks, dropsy, torn fins, sores on their bodies, and even white tufts forming around the fish's mouth and fins. You should ask yourself, what happened to these fish? Because fish seldom, if ever, develop bacterial infections without a great deal of stress or misery preceding the outbreak. Bacteria do not cause bacterial infections. It's always some other stressor, and then the bacteria take over. Control of bacterial infections is initially undertaken by assessing and improving water quality. Ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and pH are important. Increasing the space available to the fish or decreasing crowding, and then applying some gentle heat. This is a homemade heating system, and this is a professional heating system called Thermacoy. Once the fish are heated up at that point, medications in the form of antibiotics can make a huge difference. When you do treat a pond for bacterial infection, it is generally expensive because the cost of antibiotics. A word of caution, however, antibacterial remedies do not only kill the infectious bacteria, but it will also kill the beneficial bacteria responsible for breaking down fish wastes. However, very few antibiotics are actually very well absorbed into the fish when they are simply added to the water. In other words, they just don't get in. One of the best ways to introduce antibiotics to the fish into the fish is through their food. Medicated food is quickly gaining popularity in the industry as a means to treat fish. There are several medicated foods on the market, but my preference lies with the experience I've had with Medicoy, which was the first ornamental pond fish medicated food. It's based on a shrimp meal that makes it really tasty and has worked very well for me through 10 plus years of practice. Not only can the food be fed during treatment, but it can also be given to the fish on occasion during periods of seasonal or shipping stress, such as early spring, as a preventative. Controlling bacterial infection. Remembering that bacteria don't cause bacterial infections, that some stress or trauma to the skin does, handling, cold water, crowding, parasites, breeding, scuffles, etc., all cause ulcers. The bacteria simply live there and make them worse. Antibiotics and warm water do the most to curb bacterial infections in fish. Well, let's talk about infection management without injections. First, check your water for anything that would hinder fish health or delay healing. Establish that your fish do not have parasites. You can apply certain treatments as such as salt or formalin or with direction coming from other resources such as aquameds.com or koivet.com or simply have a biopsy done on the fish. And many koi clubs that are in local to you will have an old curmudgeon who has learned how to use a microscope and who would probably, if asked very nicely, biopsy your fish and tell you if parasites are present or not. There's the old curmudgeon. You could also learn how to use a microscope yourself. There are tutorials online. One is in the expanded section of drjohnson.com. There's a friend of mine in Reno. Oh, and the old curmudgeon again. Oh, another old curmudgeon. If I was treating a bacterial infection or outbreak without injections, I would check all my water quality issues and establish a zero, zero tolerance policy for parasites. I would, if at all possible, try and get the fish as gently as possible into healthier temperature ranges no change in temperature should be done quickly, but you should know that indoors, above 70 degrees, fish heal faster and fight infections better, as long as there's also plenty of space for them. People who treat heat their ponds in winter seldom have any ulcer problems in the springtime. Warmth, warmth is your best friend. I would also feed medicated food. Medicoy is good. I'd use a topical on the worst ulcers. If a fish has a has meat showing through the wound, I would use a topical antiseptic cleanser, which I will discuss a little later or in another video. I would warn you though, do not over cleanse an ulcer or it will stop healing. The edges of the ulcer should be freshened once and then left to close in. Topicals are sometimes overused. 
I might dip the fish in a suitable antibacterial bactericidal dip. Several are available these days. Resources and recommendations can come from drjohnson.com, aquameds.com, and or koivet.com. There is personalized consultation services at no cost over at aquameds.com, which would put you in contact with your fastest remedy options. So, to recap, warmth, medicated food, perfect water condition, no parasites, Minimal crowding and topical treatments form the mainstay of non-injection treatment methods. But what if you could inject? Well, this forms the basis of another video in the Koi Beginner series. We'll talk about injections in detail. Thank you for your attention.